is everything that I've had to do to the bike to get it ready. I'm jonesing to get this out on the road. What's up, Traniacs? Oh, so we are going out for a ride on that. Oh yeah, it's ready. I'm gonna throw on the old hoob tri-suit here today, just to take it for a dance now that we're getting into some serious tri training coming up. Right, Gracie? Serious tri training coming up? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I only used it for about two workouts before Campeche early in the spring for that race, so I figure I'll take it out a couple times here before Ironman Austin. We're doing the aero helmet too, like the whole business today, full thing. Let me take you through a tour of what I've set up on the bike here. So here's everything that I've had to do to the bike to get it ready. Number one, we wanna put on the deeper Alto wheels. These are the Alto C59s. That means that they're 59 millimeters deep. And these ones are set up for 25 millimeter tires. They're nice and wide. That ends up giving you a much nicer ride and it's actually less resistance having a wider tire than a narrower tire because down here with a narrower tire, say that much of the tire rolls on the road. With a wider tire, only that much rolls on the road. So the total road resistance is less. It is getting pretty tight up here in the forks, but it's, I don't know. It's not very clearly rubbing like the old P3 was. Up here, I've got one bottle in between the handlebars and one on the down tube. And on these new Cervellos, the down tube is blunted, so it's actually, I think, more arrow with a water bottle than it is without. And I choose these spots here as opposed to in behind because I don't want to have to reach in behind me back here getting up out of the saddle. I've put the Garmin 520 XT on the stem. It's not an ideal spot for it because to end up looking at it, you've got to go from here to look down. When you look down, the tail goes up, causing a bit of drag at the top there. So that's not ideal, but given that I want the bottle here, it's gotta be there. I've put the ISM split nose saddle here. I like this about as much as I dislike it. It's a really, really, really finicky saddle. One millimeter that way, and it's painful. One millimeter that way, and it's painful. The right spot is about a two millimeter window of opportunity to get that straight. Back here, we've also got an Alto wheel. This one's a little bit easier to fit in because back down here in the dropout, there's a limiter screw that I'm able to move out. So it gets me more clearance from the frame there. And then as always, the PowerTap P1 power pedals. I love these guys. Somebody asked me if you should go with one-sided or two-sided like I have. I would always go with two-sided. These are going for about $1,200 on Amazon right now compared to most power meters that are either on your crank or in your bottom bracket or on the wheel. That's still really cheap and you get a backup. If one power pedal goes down, you can still read from the other one. So there you go. She's ready. I'm jonesing to get this out on the road. I'm not so much jonesing to go and do a two hour bike followed by a 4K run in the middle of the day when it's about 29 degrees and humid, but we're Traniacs, this is what we gotta do, right? Right? Let's do it.
want to say the bike was about 67k in two hours of ride time and the run was 4k in 836 438 per kilometer pace and there's a little bit of camera time in there slowing me down somewhere around 38 miles of biking and two and a half miles of running These Traniacs a nap and a hot shower later and I think that I'm almost back to life being a regular boy again. The last I think hour and a half of that ride was in pure rain. Not even like drizzle, no just rain. Yeah. But you know as it started, well and even like as I was going out I knew that, that was gonna happen, that it was probably gonna rain. but. It's warm enough out, so it's gonna be warm. Really no reason not to go out and stay out. You know what, I think that it is fairly important to put yourself into those uncomfortable situations. There's one time that Coach Pat tells us as we show up to the pool that no, today, you know what, we're not gonna do a time trial because they had switched it over to short course yards instead of long course meters. And we're all like, good, oh, okay, no time trial today. And we all get in the mindset of we're just gonna do a swim. After the warm up. Pat says, all right, 30 seconds from now, we're doing our time trial. And like chaos, chaos absolutely erupts. And afterwards he says, you know what? You're not always gonna have the perfect amount of warm up. You're not always gonna have the perfect amount of preparation. Sometimes you just gotta get out there and do things unexpectedly. It'll toughen you up. I didn't like him for doing that, but I respected him. Don't let a little bit of rain out on a bike ride make you turn around. Or don't let a little bit of rain stop you from going out and doing a run that you had planned. Because most of the time when you get to a race, you're not gonna have ideal conditions to race in. It's not gonna be a treadmill run at 0.5 degree incline with 22 degree climate controlled, no wind, humidity. You're gonna be racing, you're gonna be training in conditions that you don't expect. And you know what? If you are tougher than those conditions, when those conditions come around, you're gonna be like, all right, I gotcha. That's cool, fuck shit sure. up. So get used to going out there and putting yourself into conditions that aren't ideal to make yourself more mentally tough while everyone else out there is just training in perfect conditions. You are gonna get tougher than they are. And when you get to the course, tough people are gonna succeed. And you know what, just take a hot shower and a nap afterwards. You might be cold, whatever you're doing, it might suck, but a nap and a hot shower, like, makes new people out of everyone. All right, Trainiacs, date night with Kim. Later. Yeah, sharp looking man here today. Yeah, oh yeah.